boy, folks, the stock market gets more interesting by the minute. I want to go ahead and watch this with you guys. But if essentially, okay, there's this uh, thing that's uh, called SARC, okay, S-ARC. And this is essentially an inverse of the Kathy Wood ARC Invest uh, ETF, essentially. So let's say, hypothetically, on a day, ARC goes down 5%, then if you're invested in SARC, you should make about 5% on your money, roughly. It's not like perfect numbers, but basically, ideally in there, okay? Now, the interesting thing with this whole situation is, very recently here, there's been a thing created called TARC, which is essentially a 2x leverage on Kathy Wood, the ARC fund, okay? And so this is getting very, very interesting now, where essentially you're gonna have some folks that uh, believe ARC's gonna come back and come back fast, and essentially if, if you are playing that, TARC's a way to play that and make 2X on your money if you truly believe that. And the most interesting thing about this whole situation is, when the uh, the SARC was created, that was before Kathy Wood went on this last big dip. It, the, the fund was, the ETF was launched somewhere in here, right? And it was right shortly, right before it went on its massive downward move, okay? Somewhere around, if I recall, the inception date was somewhere around November of uh, 2021, roughly, okay? And so here we were in this moment where, you know, shortly before this massive crash, the SARC was created. Now all of a sudden this TARC is created, right? Out of nowhere here this month. And it could be a sign that we are near a bottom or getting close to a bottom. And some investors want to say, you know what? It's time to go long ARC, but not, it's not just good enough to buy ARC straight up. We want 2X leverage on ARC, right? So, you know, you could double up your money pretty quickly. I mean, imagine a situation where ARC was to double from 40 to 80. That's not even back to where it used to be at 120, 150, anything like that. And if you have 2X leverage on that, um, that could be pretty powerful. So let's watch this video. Let's hear what they have to say. And I'll kind of react to this here. ARC short e ETF, it's up almost, what, 75% this year? Two weeks ago, you launched an ETF that's two times long the ARC ETF. So if ARC is up 1%, it goes up 2% on a daily basis, those of you who can't calculate that. So you now have this leveraged long ARC ETF. Explain the motivation. You had a long one and a short one uh, as well. What, what's the motivation here? Yeah, so, you know, we launched the short one to be you know, in our mind, a better hedge for kind of what we saw coming in the macro environment. And because there was so much demand at the time for some way to bet against our K. The long one, we just recently launched TARC because, I mean, you know, there's a lot of, uh, you know, back and forth on, on our K. But the one thing that people can agree on is that that's an ETF that's going to move and it's going to have large moves. So we wanted to give investors kind of that that tactical ability to play both sides of it. Plus, we think it's an interesting opportunity for, you know, maybe some of the ARC shareholders who are really committed to the story and, you know, might hold it at a loss. There could be some interesting planning opportunities there for them. Now, now, first, I want to make a really, really interesting point here, okay? A very, very interesting point that I think everybody should pay attention to here, okay? So he's talking about investors, 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 right? I don't think it's just about investors. I think it's about traders wanting to de the demand for this, right? Because you look at ARC, right? ARC was down 6%, okay? Now, ARC can move up or down 6% on a given day like that, right? So if you think, not even over the long term, but if you think just over the next month, uh, the, the market's going to move up or something like that, right? Well, if that's let's say the Nasdaq goes up ten ah, percent over the next month, you, you're really bullish on the market, right? Well, if the Nasdaq goes up ten percent over the next month, Arc's going to probably be up thirty to I would say fifty percent over that. Arc, Arc is is basically almost like a call option on the Nasdaq, essentially. All right. Now imagine you're in Tark, which is two x leverage ETF on that, right? So now you're talking about 2x whatever uh, ARC's doing, essentially. And so that's what I think it's really after. I don't think it's necessarily out the, after the people that are, you know, believe in ARC over the next five years. I think it's more of a play for those people that are, are trading ARC as kind of like a trading mechanism around the market. And it's kind of already acts like it's a 2x or 3x leverage uh, play on the NASDAQ. Never mind you add an actual 2x leverage on top of that. 
oh my gosh, like the moves can be absolutely insane. And so I can, I get it. Like I totally get it why they created this. And I can see a lot of people actually demanding this. Um, and it could be quite interesting. Okay. So let's get into this. By the way, if you're looking to join my private discord chat and access all the course curriculums and things like that, and you want to apply to become a member in there, check out the pinned comment down there. Also be linked in the description. Now imagine everybody being Kathy Wood and having someone set up a fund just to short your ideas. I asked her how she felt about that while we were at the ETF conference in Miami Beach last month. Here's what she said. There hasn't been another situation where an ETF has been created to bet against another ETF. Uh, and, and my attitude towards that is, wow, they are so sure that American innovation is, is not a, a going to be a sensible place to invest, that they have created a fund to short our strategy. From my point of view, if we are right and I trust our research, they're doing no research. They're just making a judgment call, I think, on valuations. But based on our research, if we're right, they are going to have to cover their shorts. So Matt, okay, so she she brings out a good point there, right, about them potentially not doing uh, much research and things like that. But I, you know, in terms of this whole, they, they never do this where they create an inverse ETF on uh, another ETF and things like that. You gotta understand, like Kathy Wood has blown up in the stock market to you know immense fame in the stock market. Where you know now, if you ask you know somebody that's invested in the stock market, hey, you know who Kathy Wood is? Pretty much everybody knows. Every single person that ever goes on CNBC nowadays, they know who Kathy Wood is. Okay, like everybody. She is blown up to really massive fame. And when you're talking about somebody that's, you know, heavily invested in stocks that a lot of people felt like were bubbles or whatever, right? I can understand the demand for for one to short that, right? Doesn't mean it's it's right or, you know, you're going to make a lot of money long term doing that, but it, I can understand the demand no different than I see this torque situation as a 2x leverage and like I get it. Like I can see why people want to play this because you know, if you're if you're right in the trajectory here, like you could make a lot of money in actually a pretty short amount of time, depending upon what side you're playing it, right? So. What do you say to that? What, she says it's not good to short American innovation. What what do you? What's the response there? Yeah, you know, I, I, there, there's a lot of things I'd want to say. I don't think we have enough time for all of it. But you know, what, what we're providing here is is tools. So you know, she went on CNBC at one point and did say, "Hey, RK is the new innovation index." Every that's, that's amazing. 119% the SARC is up uh, since November. I mean, my gosh. <sighs> I'm jealous. <laughs> I'm just going to be honest. I'm jealous, man. You know, it, it's... It, yeah. Jealous. That's all I can say about it. I don't really have anything else to say. I can't even hate on it. I'm just there, jealous, man. There are tools that allow you to go long. There are tools that allow you to go short. So that's what we're trying to do here. Um, you know, I would also just point out that just because one person says a company is innovative doesn't make it so. Um, and, you know, and there's certainly a lot of demand from people out there to, to go short that portfolio. Yes, yeah, so John Dalby, let me bring you in. Yeah, so that, that's the downside of TARC. You just saw it there, how much, you know, it's basically down 2x, what, what ARC's down roughly. That's the downside, and that's what you got to consider. If you're thinking about TARC, just understand if ARC goes to, um, you know, I, I don't know, 20, uh, you know, the, the amount of money you're going to lose is going to be so much dang more than if you were just buying ARC straight up because you're 2x leveraged through TARC. So, I understand like we got to think about it from both sides of this angle, right? Like, hey, one side over here is like, my gosh, if ARC turns and the NASDAQ turns, my gosh, <laughs> the amount of money through TARC could, that could be made is going to be immense. But on the flip side of this whole situation, you got to understand like the losses could be absolutely immense if, if the NASDAQ continues to go down and all these Kathy Wood stocks continue to go down. So it is at least something to consider. You got to consider the, the risk reward here in, in a play like this, right? Is this the future, what we're talking about here? Kathy Wood brought active management to stardom. Uh, she's not seen significant outflows in her fund, which is remarkable. Even she admits that. So what's the future here? Will we be seeing a spate of ETFs shorting or going along other people's ideas? Or is Kathy Wood kind of unique situation? That's a great question, Bob. Um, you know, I, I've spoken positively about Kathy Wood. You've asked me before. I, I kind of like the vision that she has. I, I also think that, you know, the investors need more tools out there in the marketplace. And I, I think Matt and Access is doing a good job bringing more tools available. Um, you know, this is a new space, obviously, right? So only time will tell. But I think 
my bottom line is that the more tools out there, the better, because there's more optionality for those end investors who do believe in her vision that, you know, they can use that as part of their, you know, portfolio hygiene program. You know, I agree. Uh, Matt, it does seem like we will be seeing more of this. No, now, two weeks ago, you launched the the S-Web crane shares, it's the China Internet, which is an inverse bet on another popular ETF, the crane shares China Internet ETF. You know, it, it, what what's going on there? I mean, you, it seems the answer is yes, there's going to be more of this, Matt. The, the answer is yes, there's going to be more of it. So, yeah, we did launch S-Web. You know, and again, the thesis there is... You know, there's a lot of stuff going on in China that is really scary from an investment standpoint. And we think China at this point is about as close to uninvestable as, as you can get. So, again, in our mind, nothing against K-Web, just a, another tool for investors to hedge their portfolio. We've got a whole other slate of, of ideas. And so, you know, expect a lot more stuff coming from Access throughout the year you know, a lot kind of related to this concept. So I don't want to really stick up for, for you know, Chinese stocks or, or anything in that space, obviously. Uh, you know, I've had my concerns there for, for quite some time uh, with the way the Chinese government runs things. And, and it's just not ideal if you're an investor, right? But one thing I will say is if you're talking about a space that is as un uninvestable as possible, right, which is what that gentleman just says, that's a moment when you know you're you're somewhat close to a bottom at least. Maybe you're not there, but you're pretty darn close. Usually when you get max fear and just no one wants to buy something, like you can't sell me that for a penny. That's usually a moment in time at least you start to consider, oh, you know, maybe things are about to flip here, all right? And so, I mean, even you look at the Kathy Wood the whole situation where she's still inflowing money, but it you know, ARC is just not not reacting to that. It just continues to move down and move down week after week after week pretty much right now, right? And so it at least makes you consider, like, you know, maybe we're not at the bottom yet, but we're, we're getting somewhat close. Yeah. You know, Matt, I, I'm, I always hesitate asking people to explain leverage and inverse ETF, but the viewers get confused. It's always tricky explaining how they reset every day. That's a hard thing to get your head around which is how you get ARC down, what, 54% year to date, and the ARC short ETF is up 73%. It's not an inverse, except on a daily basis. Can, can you reiterate how this works on a daily basis? I, I, I can. Question. Again, it's, it's not easy to explain. So, you know, on any one day, yeah, we're, you know, SARC is going to be negative 1x RK. But remember, returns are compounded. So if you look at the return over the year for both, those are compounded returns. So in a situation with a levered ETF, when the, the underlying goes down pretty much in a straight line, the levered ETF is gonna do better than you think it would. And if RK is basically going up in a straight line, SARC is gonna do a little bit worse than you think it would. So it's really the glide path of returns. I see a real trend here, Matt. Uh, you, you've got a spate uh, of, of single stock ETFs coming, leverage and inverse. Is, is there really an interest in leverage and inverse bets on Tesla and NVIDIA, for example? That seems to be a bit of a thing right now. There's stuff out there. Yeah. In registration. Right? And, and, I mean, and I, I feel like people, I'll, I'll make an interesting point. I feel like people in terms of these like inverse situations, I feel like they almost feel, even myself, if I look at myself, I almost feel like I would be more comfortable buying one of these inverse ETFs versus shorting straight up. And I don't know why that is. I, I really don't. Um, but I can definitely see why there's the market for that, for these inverse ETFs. I don't think they're going to slow down. I think they're going to become more popular, if anything, over time. Um, and I think as people make a lot of money or lose a lot of money, I think they'll, it'll bring these things to even more limelight. Let's put it that way. I think that single stock ETFs could revolutionize stock trading for specifically the, the retail investor. I mean, right now, if you want to get levered exposure on the long side, you'd either use margin or you'd buy call options, you know, both of which there are really good reasons why you might not want to do that. On the short side, the only way to get levered exposure is put options. And again, a lot of really good reasons why you might not want to do that. So I could really see a future where, you know, all the big names out there, you know, have 2x long and 2x short, 
ETFs that if investors want levered exposure both ways, they can easily use those ETFs to do it. I could see that as well. I mean, imagine like a, some sort of inverse ETF on like all stocks over $1 trillion market cap or something like that. So like, I mean, it wouldn't be very many. It would be like Apple and maybe like Saudi Aramco and, and Microsoft and I believe Amazon still over a trillion dollar market cap and, and Google's right around there as well. So, you know, let's say you believed like all five of the biggest big dog companies in the world were all going to fall, right? Uh, whether it be over the next day, week, month, year, whatever, you know, you buy that inverse ETF and there you, you go. You got the, the five biggest companies in the world. It's basically a bet against those five companies for however long you want to keep that on for, right? I can see the things like that actually being, you know, Pretty darn intriguing, especially when you're in a volatile market. That's the thing. When you're in a less volatile market where you're not going to get much trading activity, there's nothing crazy going on, I think that's when these things might chill out a bit in terms of how many people want to play it. But in times like right now, when you got all the inflation stuff, the Fed stuff, uh, worries about recessions, uh, companies reporting disappointing earnings and guidance not in being there and things like that, in a time period like right now, and then the China worries on top of that, I, I can see these things, if anything, getting more popular, to be honest, in volatile times. Yeah. And, and I know you're, there are other ETF companies out there that have also got similar long and short single stock ETFs in registration. I know they already exist in Europe. I guess my point here is look at this one bet that Kathy Wood had. The mileage you're getting out of this, this one bet, this SARC ETF. Um, I think that we're going to be dealing with leverage and inverse ETFs on single stock futures uh, this year. And I think it's going to be very interesting how the market responds to them overall. Certainly you had success with SARC. We'll see how it goes with single stock leveraged and inverse ETFs. Yeah, I mean, it, it, there's no doubt it's going to be really interesting to see how this plays out. And I could see even being more than... Um, 2x leverage on some of these things over time. I could even see situations where they're 3x leverage or 4x leverage and baskets of certain stocks. Like let's say there's an inverse on on AMD and Nvidia and like those are only two stocks in it or or maybe not an inverse on that but also like a 2x leverage on AMD and Nvidia or a 3x leverage or something like that on certain stocks, right? Or maybe even one where it's just the top five ARK Invest stocks, the top five, uh, you know, Warren Buffett stocks, whatever. Like, I can see these things definitely getting more popular, like I said, in a volatile market. Now, am I personally looking to play TARK? Um, not right now, although it can be pretty darn intriguing, but I'm not, I'm not looking to play something like that right now because there's a lot of Kathy Wood stocks that she holds that I just don't like. Um, and that's why I don't invest one dime into ARK because there's a lot of those stocks. I'm just like, I don't really like this stock. I'd much rather invest in this stock over here. This stock over here, I think it's got a better risk reward over here and over here. And so that's why I personally don't do it. So anyways, I want to hear your guys' opinion in that comment section. As always, hope you enjoyed this. And once again, if you're looking to join us in my private Discord chat, talk stocks all the time, research companies, things like that, check out the pinned comment and apply to be a member in there. Much love and have a great day.